Hi, this is Brad, and I'm going to tell you what it's like to fly through a microburst. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any video of this incident, but I was there, and I can tell you exactly what occurred and, and what it felt like, and I have to tell you it was, it was kind of scary. The What I believe to be a microburst, if anyone has information to the contrary, just let me know, but we, we had a flight on, uh, it was United Express 7986, traveling from Dulles, which is Washington, D.C., to Burlington, Vermont, and the date was August 24th, 2006. So as of this recording, it was probably a little bit over 10 years ago. Uh, the plane was a United Express Embraer Regional Jet. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It looked a lot like this one. Might have been a little bit different, but very similar. It was a small jet. And so here's what occurred. Um, we were going to an automotive uh, event in Vermont. I flew from San Diego to Dulles in a full-size plane. I don't remember what type it was. And then in this thing from Dulles to Burlington. And we had gotten to a pretty good altitude. I don't know that we were at our maximum altitude, but we had climbed quite a bit. When I saw the cloud from hell straight above, and straight ahead, I should say, and uh, it was pretty clear sky. I don't think it was raining. If it was, it was, it was light rain. And I was thinking to myself, I hope they don't fly through that thing. Because, and this is not the cloud, but I just use it for, you know, for visual purposes. This is actually a microburst over Phoenix that occurred, but it, it wasn't this bad, but it was, it was not great. So um, I was hoping he'd fly around it because I know that clouds can be bumpy. And I don't prefer bumpy. I think most people don't. Some people might not care. But he flew right through it. And so first the plane started kind of shaking around a little bit, jostling a little bit like planes sometimes do when they go through a cl cloud. And then uh, basically all hell broke loose. And our, our jet suddenly dropped. And, and I took note of the time. I put a good 1,000 feet in my estimation. I don't know if it was 1,000 feet. I'm a layman. You know, I, I have really no way to estimate. What I'll tell you is the plane dropped immediately, just like a son of a gun. And it wasn't a nose down type of a drop. It was a, a level drop. And, and I guess the best way I could describe it was like the hand of God slapped the plane straight down. Just boom, slapped it. And, uh, and then, and then uh, it started shaking once it had been dropped down, almost like the plane was going to fall apart. I didn't feel like it was because I know they're very well engineered, but that's what it sounded like and that's what it felt like. And then almost as quickly as it dropped, it, it rose very, very rapidly, like somebody, again, almost put a hand underneath it. I don't know if that had to do with the, the microburst or if that was the pilot fighting it or some combination of the two. But it rose very, very quickly. And then we had the exact same thing happen again. Slap straight down, uh, everything flying through the air, everything. And, uh, and then stabilized, and then it, it climbed up again. And what's, I guess, kind of funny is as the plane was being knocked down by the, by the downdraft, I, I was saying the F word, which isn't nice, I guess, but it's true. And, uh, and then as it climbed, the woman sitting in the seat next to me, who I didn't know, was saying... Uh, uh, S H you know what, so I'm saying F word as it goes down. She's saying S as it comes up, and we have this dueling F and S as the plane is pitching. Uh, I shouldn't say pitching; it's not accurate. Uh, dropping down and then going back up again. So after several minutes, the plane stabilized, and uh, and then it it smoothed out considerably, uh, pretty quickly too, I might add. And um, so I looked back, and the the sole flight attendant she'd gone flying through the air. She was on the ground at the back of the plane crying and bleeding. Uh, I think she break, she broke or sprained her ankle or her leg. She certainly cut it. And she had the serving cart, which is big and heavy, uh, kind of sideways, halfway on her. And uh, she wasn't doing too good. She was really not feeling it. Again, she's crying pretty profusely. And um, everything on the plane flew through the air that wasn't belted down. When I say everything, I, I mean 100%. So if you had a drink, you had a laptop, you had a piece of paper, a pad of paper, something like that, all gone. And I guess the only real good news, uh, other than the fact that we didn't die, is that the passengers were all belted in. So the only person to go flying through the air, and in that way at least, was the flight attendant, and we were okay. So uh, what was what was really kind of interesting after all this happened is the pilot comes on the... PA system, and he says, um, 
says, well, ladies and gentlemen, there's your captain, and obviously we had a little bit of unexpected turbulence back there, but should be smooth sailing ahead, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off that seatbelt sign, and you can feel free to roam about the cabin if you need to. And we were all thinking, seriously, you got to be kidding, because we were pretty much... Uh, you know, terrified by this thing. So then the pilot or the co-pilot came back and saw how injured the flight attendant was. And I think he realized that things were maybe a little bit worse than what they thought. So finally, we landed in Burlington. Again, the rest of the flight pretty uneventful. Uh, the paramedics and the firefighters met us at the gate and they tended to the flight attendant who was injured and unhappy. The passengers acted as the, the flight attendant, basically. They walked around with a plastic bag and told everyone to give them the trash, and at the end, several passengers walked along through the aisles and told the other passengers to put on their seat belts and make sure their seat was in the upright position. So actually, the passengers were, um, I think, very cooperative and very helpful. So that was basically what happened. We thought that this would probably be kind of a, a major story in Burlington, because I think Burlington is not usually a place that you know has a, a whole lot of crazy stuff happening. But uh, very sadly, on that date, August 24th, 2006, and if you're bored, you can Google it, there was a, a shooting in a school. I think it was, I don't know if it was a mass shooting or a multiple shooting, but um, that was the big, big story. And I don't think this thing ever made the, the newspaper or the television or anything like that. So uh, in any event, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, this, and I wish I had a better video or something. Um, Again, this shows what a downdraft looks like. I think that our saving grace is that we were high enough up that even though the plane got knocked down, uh, we, we were able to recover. We didn't hit the ground or anything. But um, certainly, uh, it was a very scary situation, and it was handled well by the pilots. But once, if I see another cloud like that, I, I certainly hope that they find a way to go around the thing because it, uh, it, somebody could have got seriously hurt. Hopefully that flight attendant was not seriously hurt. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please do leave them here on YouTube. Uh, if you think for some reason it's not a microburst, something like that, you can let me know. I think it, I think it was. Uh, scared the hell out of us, to tell you the truth. And again, I'm sorry that the video is not a little bit more exciting, but again, I don't have anything to show you other than a couple of pictures. So I think I will wrap it up. I appreciate your time. And again, uh, leave questions and comments, and, and I will certainly respond to them. Bye-bye.